by uh, Dr. Leonard Hubbard, who was the state orthopedic surgeon and assisted by several state nurses. The result of this clinic was that there was sufficient proof that there was a need for crippled children's work on a large scale in the vicinity of Elmira. The committee then organized small group meetings and met with all of the members of the Rotary Club. At these meetings, uh, they talked about the advantage if we established a children's reconstruction house in Elmira. And at, and at the club meeting in 19, uh, Jan January 19, 1923, the club unanimously adopted both the moral and the financial responsibility for providing this. And they, before the meeting ended, they had already uh, had $14,000 uh, subscribed by members for the work. The club then converted a large house on 563 Maple Avenue into a well-equipped facility for treating and caring for the crippled children. Also at this time, at the request of the club president, Bolger, all the wives of the Rotarians were invited to a meeting to explain the need for and the help and cooperation in making the house for crippled children into a home. Mrs. Bolger presided and 34 interested Rotarian wives attended. They were organized at that time into oh, the Rotary Ants, which is really the first <coughs> auxiliary, Rotary Auxiliary in the world, as far as we know. And Mrs. S. French Izzard served as their first president. During the fall of 1930, the reconstruction home had a special visitor, as you probably recognize. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was campaigning for his second term as governor of New York, and he stopped by the home and was showed one of the children who was uh, there. If you would notice, there are uh, the president of the Rotary Club, uh, Edwin Ro Brown was there, and then a past president, uh, Kill Killinger, Clarence Killinger, as well as Harry Hutchinson, a board member, and a, I believe he was also a Rotarian, but he was a board member of the Reconstruction Hall. Until 1933, this was the major project of our club and of the Rotary Hands. During that time, about 350 children were treated at the home. Some of the children, because of treatment and encouragement given to them by the home, were fulfilling responsible positions as secretaries, teachers, lawyers, accountants, and some of them even were working in the home to help other people that, went, that uh, were coming in. Okay, then during 1935-36, the reconstruction home was closed. That was because a state agencies had been established and they now provided the educational medical care for these unfortunate children. So that, that uh, uh, kind of ended the major project for the Rotary Ants, but they didn't stop. And after the closure of the home, the Rotary Ants uh, contributed to a Girl Scout troop, troop of underprivileged children. And then during World War II, they worked with the Red Cross War Emergency Campaign. And they also supported and worked with the Mayor's Committee for servicemen. And then in 1947, the Rotary Ants helped organize a local cerebral palsy organization. As a matter of fact, the cerebral palsy fund was established by a dessert bridge party in which the money was raised to start that account. Uh, the club has had a few interesting speakers. I'm not one of them, but, the, but if you would notice in the picture here, uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Peter for providing this for us. Uh, in November 1st, 1936, at the regular uh, Friday meeting at the First Baptist Church, Amelia Earhart spoke to the club about uh, aviation. Pictured with Amelia is the club president. This is Harry, I can't pronounce it, G-L-I Feather, Gliffler. He was the president. And then you notice there's a lot of young characters up there. They were all soaring pilots, including 
uh, Peter's dad. Is he the one on the se second from the left there? No, he's the far left. Far left, okay. It also included uh, two Izzards. Yeah, yeah, there are a couple of Izzards in there also. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and I, yeah, so, okay. <laughs> a couple of Izzards. Okay. We're not from here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Okay, and then let's jump ahead to another project for the club. Uh, this is in 1960. The Elmira Rhodey Club helped to launch capabilities. This photograph uh, pictures Rhodey Club President Richard Seams with representatives from the Streeter Construction Company examining plans. A Rotarian by the name of Jim Norris worked on those plans and reduce the cost of the original building from $40,000 to $20,000. The club then donated $5,000, and local banks uh, loaned the rest of the money to $15,000 with the Rotary Club Charitable Corporation guaranteeing the loan. That's how they could get it. When the loan was paid off, the Elmira Rotary Club turned the building over to capabilities for $1. Okay, so in 1962 and 63, uh, the last item here is that the Rotary Club, along with 10 other Rotary Clubs in the southern part of District 712, founded Camp Star. Each summer, this camp is held at the Watson Homestead and provides children ages 7 to 12 with, their, with disabilities with a one-week overnight camp so that they could experience a summer camp just like everybody else. And the, and the second benefit of that is that the parents got a full week of, of relaxation because they knew that their, their kids were being well taken care of. Finally, the club during its first 50 years was a sponsor of 10 additional Rotary Clubs. We, we sponsored Hornell, Waverly, Canandaigua, Geneva, Corning, Watkins Montour, Dansville, Whalen, Amara Heights, and Horseheads. That's it, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>